Welcome to the Two Old Kids and Two Young Adults podcast. We've combined life experience with young adult drive and ambition. Are you just starting to college plan? Did you finish your education and wonder, now what? Join us in this lively discussion about the topics you need to know to create the next stage of your life's dreams, careers, finances, education, and more. All right, we decided that that was not enough. <laughs> Brad has agreed to stay on for a couple of more minutes and have a little bonus clip. Uh, I cut Alex off. I know Alex has got a couple more questions. Alex, ask Brad what you want to know. Oh, man, what else do I want to know? Never mind. I have better questions. You weren't ready. I'm going to have to kick you out. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Brad, well, Alex is kind of getting his thoughts wrapped around that. I want to talk about the impact that a mentor will have when you're coming up. You've got 30 years in a career. I have to think somewhere along the line, you know, you've had some some folks who've taken you under the wing. Talk about how important that is and what you've been able to learn and use that as a mentor as you became, you went into management. Having a mentor is critical um, for any person coming up. I, I would think in any career, there has to be someone that you can talk to that you can use to bounce ideas off of, um, you know, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm thinking about doing that, or this happened to me, especially in times of, I'm going to say crisis, and maybe it's not a real crisis, but it is to you, you you felt you were passed over or something didn't go right for you. And we have to be careful about um, how we respond to things. So having the ability to talk to someone who has been there, done that, uh, in your same field, to bounce an idea off of, you know, what should I do here? What do you think about this? I think it's critical. I, I know it was for me. I know that um, I used that a number of times where I would call someone and say, you know, uh, somebody that I respected, uh, one of my, uh, somebody who was a superior or a friend of mine, and I would call that I'd be, and I would ask, tough questions that I, I didn't know where else to go. Yeah. Um, and that was critical. So when I became a, a supervisor, then I, I tried to take everything that I learned from the 25 years or 20 some years that I had and, and wrap it into one. And I tried to be that same mentor. And I tried to do that with my children and with um, other, and my children are grown adults, but there will always be your children. But I try to mentor them in the same fashion. I think it's critical to have a sounding board, to be able to bounce ideas off of, you know, am I out of, am I way out of line here? Sometimes the answer was, yes, you're way out of line. <laughs> That's your inside voice. Yeah. Uh, don't say that. Or, you know, or maybe uh, couch it this way. You need to soften your tone. It's really critical because oftentimes when, it, when, when we're trying to make decisions and um, sometimes uh, we may we may come across a little more hostile or edgy, and that doesn't work in in the in in these types of uh, uh, arenas. They just don't. You need to come off as polished and professional and well thought. So having a mentor to kind of guide you and to uh, smooth out the rough edges, because you know. We all, I think, have rough edges. I know I had a lot of rough edges, and I needed a lot of mentoring to smooth out my rough edges as I came up through the ranks. And it was invaluable to me, and I think it would be invaluable to any young person to seek out and as many mentors as you can, get ideas. <clears throat> all right, Alex, uh, I've teed it up for you, man. I gave you a couple of minutes to think through a question for Brad. What, what do you got for, the, for this young man? All right. So my next question for you, Brad, um, in terms of personality types, again, very fulfilling career, but can be a very difficult career. If you were a younger person, you just think about, you know, what do I want to do with my life. You got to really turn inward and just be like, you know, what's my personality type like? Would this work into these types of roles? What personality types do you think would do best and I'll count the work that you've done. And then what are the personality types that you would maybe steer them in a, a different direction to do? Ooh, see, now, now you're getting into the psychology of, of this. And there are tests you can actually take, is yeah. I'm sure that you know. 
that actually will put you, will classify you and say, based upon your test results, this is what we, where we think you would do best. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw in, in law enforcement, you, you need to be outgoing. You need to enjoy interacting with people. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to be able, you, you can't have a fear of confrontation mm-hmm. because unfortunately in law enforcement, our job can be uh, to confront people. Right. And, and to take that to whatever step is necessary in order to ensure compliance and or safety. So there are people in their, in their, I think in their hearts know whether they know what law enforcement does. Everybody can see the movies and the news um, and whether like I've talked to our daughter and I kind of, I wanted to see her to be a doctor. She says, Oh no, I can't stand the sight of blood. She's amazing in science, but does not like the sight of blood. So, okay, that's a no go. We need to find another, another area. And I think, so that's such an individual uh, thing for each person. They have to decide where they think they would be most happy. And college is a good opportunity with the internships and the research that you can do to see, to try to figure out, you know, is this something that I would like that was not available to us back in my time? We, we didn't have that, those opportunities. So I can't really tell you, you know, the perfect personality it has to be somebody who's balanced has good character, good morals, good integrity. And that's for law enforcement because we, you know, you, you can be subjected to temptations. I've been on scenes where there've been millions of dollars in currency, but you have to have high character and uh, and high integrity. Um, there's, you know, you follow the law and you make sure that you're doing the right thing and you're there for the right reasons. Unfortunately, some individuals can get into many, any type of profession for the wrong reasons, for their own selfish reasons. So. You, the individual, has to just decide what's best for you. I hope that helps. Yeah, it? absolutely. <laughs> That's right. super interesting. <clears throat> Brad, that was awesome. Those last two answers were fantastic. You're still not off the hook because we're going to come back and talk about explosions and uh, criminal activity because that stuff people want to hear about too, like real stuff, like not the stuff Alex was talking about on TV. Uh, but we'll get you back when you come back from one of your trips. Thank you so much for being on. Really appreciate you taking a little extra time to answer a couple more questions. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you, Brad. That was awesome. Thanks. Make sure and subscribe to this show so you don't miss the next episode of Two Old Kids and Two Young Adults podcast. We want to hear from you as well. You can email us at 2ok2ya at gmail.com.